This may look like an old, disused Victorian railway tunnel. We've got loads of them in the UK. But this one is about to get a new lease of life in one of the coolest ways possible. This old heap of bricks will soon become one of the most state-of-the-art automotive test facilities in the world. And the story of this place starts about 3,000 miles uh, that way. 16 years ago, rumours began to spread about strange noises being heard in the hills of Pennsylvania. Hikers were hearing screaming burnouts and roaring V8 echoing through the trees, seemingly rumbling up through the ground. After a bit of investigation, it turned out that American motorsport royalty Chip Ganassi had commissioned a secret test facility to be constructed, using the remnant of an old highway tunnel in the middle of a forest. Sealed at both ends, the tunnel has been used since 2003 to test stock cars and Indy cars, allowing for a much more secretive and controlled facility than a traditional wind tunnel or an airfield. Hop back here in 2021, and with this facility being just like the tunnel in Pennsylvania, it won't be long until they're receiving clients from F1, endurance racing, and road car manufacturers. The whole place will be opening up soon, so let's take a look around and see what this facility is all about. Before we get to the tunnel, it's hard to miss this huge entry building. Now, the reason it's this size is so that the front of the tunnel can be covered and so that a lorry can drive all the way down here and drive into the facility and unload its secret car without anyone seeing. Now, the building is split into two so that you can have Aston Martin F1 in this side and Red Bull F1 in that side and they can't spy on each other. Let's get to the main event. This Victorian engineering masterpiece was built as part of the Great Central Railway and opened in 1897, but closed in 1966, laying dormant until very recently. This is Catesby Tunnel. It is 2.7 kilometers long, and just like the tunnel in the States, it's sealed at both ends. At either end, there will be a turntable so that a car can perform a run and not have to orchestrate a 17-point turn for the return home. Currently, only 400 meters of the tunnel has been tarmacked, but it won't be long until the full 2.7K is operational. Speaking of the tarmac, this high-quality surface has been laid so that the tunnel is as smooth as the best racetracks, and the walls will soon be lined with countless measuring devices to log the cars doing their thing. Just before we fully explore what this tunnel's all about, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. They're back sponsoring the channel, and just like this tunnel has been given a new lease of life, Manscaped is here to give the same treatment to your undercrackers. This is their new Performance Package 4.0, with the main component being the new and improved Lawnmower 4.0. Their trimmer is now wireless and gives 90 minutes of trimming to a single charge. The trimmer includes ceramic blades with skin safe technology to avoid any nasty nicks and cuts while you're down there. In the package, you'll also get ball deodorant and ball toner to keep things fresh. And for a limited time, you will also get this quality travel bag and these pretty sick boxers for free. So use our code TRIBE20 to get 20% off your performance package and free shipping. Okay, time for a cool animation. This is the configuration for the tunnel. The cars will enter the facility via a workshop area, meaning that any prototype vehicles can be kept hidden from any prying eyes. Once through the workshop area, the car sits ready at the start of the tunnel. There is then an acceleration zone, allowing the car to get up to its set test speed. The car will then carry that speed through the test zone and then slow down in a deceleration zone before reaching the far turntable to turn 180 degrees and head back the other way. The tunnel test is controlled by a lighting system inside and outside the car, alerting the driver when it's safe to get cracking. And we've been given permission to drive down the existing 400 meters to get a taste of what's to come. The guys at Total Sim have been really kind to me and allowed me to be one of the first people to drive a car down this tunnel. The speed limit is just 20 miles an hour, but to be honest, once you're up and running, with the tunnel enclosed around you, 20 seems enough. The real speed limit in here, once it's operational, is 100 miles an hour. You can go further if your risk assessment is good enough. That will feel rapid down here. 
What I love about this project is that they are utilising this amazing piece of Victorian engineering. There are so many tunnels like this that are just used for cycling routes or simply abandoned. So using it for this amazing facility, I think it's absolutely awesome. Imagine Victorians finding out what a Formula One car would look and sound like travelling down their tunnel. And it shows how great a piece of engineering this is. They haven't seemingly changed the tunnel that much. It's still as it was, apart from some padding in the roof and maybe some drainage repairs here and there. You've got to give the guys credit. When someone came up with this idea, there must have been a lot of people saying, are you mad? Just wait until there's Formula One cars driving down here. And what about all the hypercars? Valkyrie, the Gordon Murray T50, Mercedes AMG One. Who knows, they could all be here too. Why wouldn't you? So we are now at the end of the tarmac, the end of the 400 meters, and we're transitioning onto the concrete. Just through these cones. Now I'm gonna crawl along here because there's a lot of water on top of the concrete, so it can be quite slippery. So we have left the string of lights behind. They will extend the entire way down the tunnel once it's finished, but they haven't quite got there yet. So we are plunged into the darkness of the Victorian era. It's quite scary to think of massive steam trains pummeling down here back in the day. Wow. Okay, let's stop. Into park, engine off, and then lights fully off. Let's see how dark this place is. Three, two, one. You cannot see a thing. Honestly, it's as if someone has put black covers over all the windows. I can't even see my bonnet in front of me. Let me, uh, you've got a light right now so you can see me presenting. Let me switch this off so you guys can see just how dark it is. Wow. <laughs> You cannot see a thing. Victorian tunnels are very, very cool, but very, very scary. So what makes this tunnel so special, warranting millions of pounds invested to get it up and running? Well, there are plenty of benefits to using this over and above a traditional wind tunnel. The first thing is cost. The amount of money you need to spend to pump air all day into a traditional wind tunnel can go well into five figures. You don't need to do that in here, so using this facility will be much, much cheaper. And you don't have to deal with any adverse airflow, like crosswinds or a breeze coming in either end of the tunnel, something that you would have to cope with if you were, say, out on an airfield. That means that you can do run after run in near perfect conditions, something that you will really struggle to do using the more traditional method of aerodynamic testing. It doesn't get much more controlled, but also real life than this, a full-size car driving down a real road, rather than, if you're lucky, a static car on a rolling road with air being artificially blown over it. Also, it's a real car driving under its own grunt, which is gonna be way more relevant to the whole engineering team buying the car. And you have the temperatures from the engine running and the brakes working, which you can incorporate into your test. Another thing that aerodynamicists need to think about is the size of the domain, that being the 3D space that the car sits in and that the air is flowing through. If your domain is too small, the aerodynamic flow over the car will interfere with the limit of the domain, resulting in a pretty duff test. So your domain needs to be a certain size so that the airflow flowing over the car doesn't get disturbed and you have an accurate test. Now the frontal area of an average new car is about two meters squared. And the guys have measured this tunnel at about 40 meters squared. And that is deemed enough space to perform an accurate test. If you really want to go ham, you can get a second car in here because it is simply a normal road and you can perform a drafting test essentially putting your car in a real racing scenario. And there's also plans for a wet section of the track. But to be honest, I've had some Victorian rain fall on me throughout this shoot because it's not quite 100% sealed yet and they haven't quite finished the drainage, but that'll come. 
In the near future, this place will be booked up with big name clients, all looking to secretly test their latest creations in one of the most developed aerodynamic facilities in the world. Never mind those fancy videos of smoky airstreams flowing over a car, this is the future and it's 120 years old.